Graham View this week, we visit trainer Graham Holland in County Tipperary. Then on to Tralee for the semi-finals of the Dowling Family Coleco Sweep. We see how World Class is doing after his Scottish trip, but first it's racing from Shelburne Park. <laughs> A very big night here at Shelburne Park for the final of the Don O'Reilly Auctioneers Easter Cup. €50,000 to the winner. Massive occasion. We also have a massive dog present. Premier Fantasy. 5-2 to two on on some boards. He looks a real star. But finals are finals. Indian Ruler in six. Shantabar in five. Reggie Roberts has two of them in there. He's always dangerous. And of course, Paul Hennessy has Phoenix Ice. A great final. We've something to look forward to. But first, let's have a look at the Richie Walsh Tri-Distance Final with the winner's prize of €4,000. And in trap one is Dog Almighty, owned by the Precious Diamond Syndicate, trained by Stephen Burke, a son of Smooth Rumble and Pony Nikita. This is a dog with a big reputation, yet to show it here in Dublin. But could this be his night? And in two, we have Dundrum Prince, owned by Paddy McArdle, trained by Kevin Losty, a son of Jamella Prince and Mingers Mist. This is a dog with big early pace, and he doesn't like being passed too easily. He they won't find it easy to get by him coming home. Another early pacer, Heavenly Flare, owned by Tony Head. Trained by Johnny Donahue, a son of Sparrow and Nikita and Homestead Annie. This fellow's led in both his rounds here so far in this stake and will be going to the bend with Dundrum Prince. In four, we have the reserve, Diego Glory, replacing your eyes only. Diego Glory, owned by Jaron Martin Richardson, trained by Tommy Fagan, son of Spiral Nikita and Chikichita, a hugely consistent greyhound. He's had 75 races, winning 15 of them. And in five, Chestnut Jet, owned by Tony Bennett, trained by Owen McKenna, son of Clemesson Jet and Chestnut Emma, eight from 31, his strike rate. He won the John J. Casey 575 here earlier in the year. A brilliant tracker, this fellow, and a big finish. And from six, we have Chestnut Jets, Kennel Companion, Great Lark, owned by Matty Angland and Donal Leader, trained, of course, by Owen McKenna, son of Larkill Joe and Kerberg Picture. This massive tracker, 80 pounds weight, and he really is the new star here on the Shelburne circuit. Brilliant performances in recent weeks, and the obvious favourite for this final. Six, the favourite, Great Lark, the hair behind traps and away to go. Quite a level start, number four, fast away to Yeager Glory, but two, Dundrum Prince as usual. Storms clear to the bend up the inside, number one, Dog Almighty is second, and six is third, Great Lark. Around the second corner is number two out front, that's Dundrum Prince. One, Dog Almighty is closing, six, Great Lark is closing, and four, five, Dund or Chestnut Jet getting into it. Onto the third bend, it's still Dundrum Prince in front. Bit of trouble in behind, and now Chestnut Jet goes past six, Great Lark. He's challenging. Off the final bend is two, Chestnut Jet. Here comes number one coming back again, Dog Almighty on the inside. It looks as though it could be two, one and six at the line. A real thriller there, the time 32-63. What a thriller it was, the final of the Richie Walsh tri -distance. The winner, number two, Dundrum Prince, owned by Paddy McArdle and trained by Kevin Losty. Second, number one, Dog Almighty. Third, number six, Great Lark. The time, 32.63. Well, Kevin, Dundrum Prince after winning the Richard Walsh tri -distance. Judging on the time tonight and last week, he's a better dog than last year. He is, he's a stronger dog now and he's staying the distance a bit better, so he is. He's, the weather may be suiting him too, you know. An easy race to read, he sort of came away and, and led off. Yeah, he got a little bit of trouble where he wanted to hold the rest of them off, the strong finishers. And thank God he, he did. <laughs> Indeed, any plans for the dog now? No, sure, celebrate tonight and see how he is in the morning. Sure, we'll take it from there. And we go now to the consolation final of the Don O'Reilly Auctioneers Easter Cup for 2004. Won the other Rebel. In two, Ashtown Rumble. Trap three is Riverside Doodle. In four, Jet Tank. Five, Top Gun. And six, Two Shanes. The hair coming up behind traps. And away they go. And first to show is trap number five, Top Gun. Now number four, Jet Tank, showing blistering early pace. Into the bend, that's number five, Top Gun, with number three, Riverside Doodle. Back in third, number one, the other Rebel. Down the far side, Jet Tank and Riverside Doodle. Back in third, number one, the other Rebel. Down into the third bend, the other Rebel showing big pace on the inside. And the other Rebel is going to lead on the third bend from number three, Riverside Doodle. Here comes number six, Two Shanes, on the wide outside. But it's the other Rebel around the final corner. The other Rebel from number three, Riverside Doodle, up the home straight. Here comes number one, the other Rebel goes on to land the spoils. Second number two, Ashtown Rumble, and third number three, Riverside Doodle, the winning time, 26.63. 
28.75. And the result of the consolation final for the Don O'Reilly Auctioneers Easter Cup for 2004. First, number one, the other Rebel. Second, number two, Ashtown Rumble. And third, number three, Riverside Doodle. 28.75, the winning time. A great win for the other Rebel, trained by Francis O'Donnell and owned by Matt O'Donnell, being presented with the trophy by Donal O'Reilly. And now it's time for the much-anticipated final of the Easter Cup with a total prize fund of €80,000. In Trop 1, Phoenix Ice, trained by Paul Hennessy for Nolene McCreevy and Anne Cox, a son of Lark Hill Joe and Lady Noor, 16 wins from 39, ideally drawn the rails, a strong running greyhound, but does need plenty of luck. Trap 2 is the hot favourite, Premier Fantasy, trained by Seamus Graham from Michael McElhatton in Tyrone. This son of Premier County in Nifty Neve possesses all the qualities to go to the very top. He has brilliant early pace, he flies down the back straight and he stays strongly. He's a very worthy favourite indeed, he's the one they all have to beat. In 3, the Tote Gold Cup winner, First Charter, owned and trained by Reggie Roberts down in Rathangan, County Kildare, a son of Jamela Prince and Newbridge Girl. He never runs a bad race. He's won 13 of 37. He normally goes up strongly. Expect him to be there, thereabouts, as they race to the corner. In 4, the second of the Reggie Roberts trained runners. This is Awesome Impact, owned by Geraldine Fitzpatrick. He's a son of Jamela Prince and Abel Ivey. He's certain to struggle in the early stages, but if he's close at the third bend, well, watch out. This fella, an absolutely flying finisher. In five, Shantabar, owned and trained by Larry Clancy and Mead, a son of Staples Joe and Bright Snow. This fellow has brilliant early pace. He's won eight from 19, but the draw, certainly not in his favour. He's the outsider of the lineup, and he does need plenty of luck. And finally, in six, we have Indian Ruler, trained by Jerry Hullion for the Paw Doctor Syndicate in Galway. This son of Lark Hill Joe and Queen Maid is absolutely drawn to perfection in the stripes. He has brilliant early pace. He's the second favourite, and, well, he's certainly one worthy of plenty of respect. They're here now on the way for the final of the Donald Riley Auctioneers Easter Cup for 2004. The runners in one Phoenix Ice. Trap two, the red hot favourite Premier Fantasy. Three is First Charter. In four, Awesome Impact. Five, Shantabar. And trap six is Indian Ruler. They're here coming up behind traps and away they go. Premier Fantasy off to a flyer. He already leads by a length and a half, two lengths into the corner. And Premier Fantasy is clear. Could we see the track record going? Phoenix Ice slips two in second. Then comes number six, Indian Ruler. But down the far side, Premier Fantasy is five lengths clear. Indian Ruler showing Massive pace. Then comes one Phoenix Ice. Look at awesome impact. He normally flies home, but Premier Fantasy is clear as they turn for home. Number six, Indian Ruler comes next. Then comes four, awesome impact. Coming with an absolute flying finish. But number two, Premier Fantasy crosses the line. 28.08. A sensational track record performance. This is a serious greyhound. What a class act. Second, awesome impact. And third, Indian Ruler. But what a time. Well, there you have it, folks. You've just witnessed history. 28.08, the fastest run ever done in Ireland for 525 yards, just been recorded by Premier Fantasy. This greyhound has it all. He was two lengths clear as they crossed the line for the first time. He went clear down the back straight. Indian ruler ran a brilliant race. Awesome him. Came from the next parish to finish second behind Premier Fantasy. But this greyhound really was absolutely out on his own. Sensational. 28.08. Words can't express it. This is a champion in the making. Well, dear Mid Graham, a tremendous performance. He really is a champion. Well, every round, uh, trap draws went against him, where he was positioned. He got trouble most rounds, but he's early last week, he got a bit of trouble off first starter, but he's a super dog. I haven't seen the likes of him ever. I'm not in it as long as it has my father, but he said from an early stage he was something special. I don't think many of us have seen the like of him, but you must have been absolutely satisfied once traps opened and he came out in front and that was it. Ten yards, it was over, over. Nothing, nothing that'll catch him once he gets a clear. There was not, once one wasn't inside him, he was going to get a solo on the inside. And a time of 28.08, something else. There for the taking. Huh? I might have done it last week only for Reggie, but uh, Father, he takes his time with him and Gets the best out of him in the final night, and uh, he put spread four bitches to him at home. He knew the he knew Premier Fantasy or Premier County was a special log. Took a risk, and he well obviously a now, risk. Obviously now we'll have to wait for the the trainer himself to make the decisions about where he'll go. But I presume Champion Stakes and Derby. And Champion Stakes 550. He get every yard of it. Uh, probably yeah. He can get a rest probably for a few weeks now, but. Uh, Delighted for Michael McElhatton as well. He's one of our best clients ever.
Well, a quite sensational performance here in the final of the Easter Cup. 28-08, Premier Fantasy. No wonder he was 5-2 to two on favourite for it. With me, owner Michael McElhatton, trainer Seamus Graham. But Michael, that was something else. Absolutely. F fantastic performance, Michael. Can't believe it. Really delighted. Delighted here for Seamus. And... Uh, Thrilled a bit. I believe you didn't time. even take a puff out of the cigarette as the hair was going round. Oh, would stop. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little nervous, Rack. Uh, but uh, I'm well over it now. Just, just thrilled. Completely thrilled. But Fantastic once, training performance. Once traps went up, you must have, your heart must have been okay. I was, uh, I was quite happy going to the first corner, and then I saw a six making a big dash into the third corner, and then uh, I sort of he seemed to hit the, hit the, come off the fourth end very well and, and ran home very, very strong as he always does. Well, as you say, a great training performance. Seamus Graham, this is a bit of a habit, but you've always said this was a really good greyhound. I knew from a long time ago, I told Michael, Michael had a little bit of an interest in another dog at the time, and I said, what do you want to buy him for? I said, you have better at all. And I think he has. <laughs> now, what will be the path from here, Seamus? Obviously, you'll be talking about eventually the Champions Stakes in the Derby, probably. Yeah, he won't be over -rest. Uh he may have to run the race just to keep him in June here and there along the way, but he's not going to be an every Saturday night dog, I can tell you that. Well, lads, you've won already a derby with, together, so you can now dream of another one. Well, there's no one I'd like to win it more for than this gent. Another party, Michael? Uh, maybe, maybe we quiet one tonight, all right. <laughs> but I'll tell you about before the end of the next week, it could have a serious, serious part in our hands. Well, gentlemen, congratulations. Thanks Marvellous greyhound. Golden and County Tipperary is the new home of Englishman Graham Holland and his family, who moved to Ireland a few years ago looking for a better way of life as a greyhound trainer. He felt by keeping a smaller kennel and with tracks closer to his home, he could spend more time with his young family. I picked Golden because um, it's very central to all of the tracks. Um, we were a little bit lucky finding the field. We, we went to Clonmel to look at a site and uh, John Wine, who's a local fella to here, who took me there, um, took me back through and showed me the field. And it was a seven acre field that was square, nice and dry. It was middle of December, peeing down with rain, and the field looked perfect. It had outline planning permission on it, so, so we tried to buy it, and, which we did, you know. And uh, very pleased we did. Golden's a lovely village, and the boys are really enjoying the school. It's a smashing school. People are very friendly. So um, we couldn't be more luckier. We've got some quite nice facilities. We've got, uh, we've got a 225 metre gallop, set of boxes. It's nice to start the pups on with the boxes and everything. Get them at, um, when you start schooling them, just get them used to the boxes before you go to the schooling track. And it's handy to have the gallop on site because obviously you're not loading up dogs and taking them off to, to a gallop, you know, the, the, the racing dogs. Um, just try and make everything as easy as possible, you know. If you've got something handy, it, it, you're not losing time going somewhere to do it. We've got two big exercising paddocks. There's one about an acre and there's one at the top about two acres. They can get out and do what they like. We tend to let the pups up there every day because they're in smaller runs. So they can just get out and do, you know, run free, get the balance and what have you. We've obviously got quite a few dogs here, so there's plenty of work to be done. It's a bit of a family affair, really. We've got Brenda, who lives just around the corner. Um, she works uh, full time for us now. There's Nikki, my wife, me, myself, and we've also got the mother-in-law. Uh, we all muck in and get it done. Um, training over here is a lot more laid back. You know, um, there's not so many rules and regulations. The NGRC are very, very, very strict on time finding and things like that. Um, sort of tie your hands up quite a lot. You weren't happy with the dog in any, any, any way, you'd have to take a vet certificate in to pull the dog out of a race. Over here, if you spoke to a race manager, you let them know. Um, they're a lot more understanding, um, a lot more dog orientated and owner orientated. The majority of dogs we brought over in the beginning were owned by English people. They were sort of loyal owners to, to us in England, um, willing to try their pups or whatever, and uh, that kept the business going. And a lot of the owners are still stay because we had a bit of luck, we won a few races. Most of those dogs now would have been sold on or gone back to England.
but um, we have got some Irish owners. We haven't got a great deal, still got a lot of English owners, but um, we've got two or three Irish owners and uh, they're smashing people. We've got a nice dog in the kennel, Born Flyer at the moment, owned by some people from Glonmel, um, Siobhan, Hanim O'Dwyer and uh, Selby Duran. He should be running the Clonmel in the near future. He holds a track record around Thurlis for the 570. He should be a nice dog for the future. In training, it's Riverside Doodles. Doodles is had 11 races and won seven. His latest outing was at the consolation final of the Easter Cup, where he came home a very close third. Also, we got Broadacres McCoy. He's owned by Bob Colborne, who's an owner from England. He lives in Newbury in England. Uh, been a very good owner for us. Got quite a few dogs in the kennel. Uh, he'd have sort of five or six runners over here. We've also got Droopy Snowy. Bob's got half shearing her with me. Um, we bought her mainly as a brew bitch because she's um, quite well bred. She's got some American bloodline in her. But, uh, we did put her to dog at 15 months, but she missed a Honcho Classic. So we, we, we tried to um, give her a few gallops and she stays sound. And uh, she's won quite a few races for us. She's, been a little star on her own way for, for a bit that wasn't really meant to race. So we, we've got quite a lot of pups on on the property. Uh, we mainly rear a few pups for people. We've got a few of our own. Um, hopefully that's next year's future. Some of them, you know, uh, with any luck. They're out some quite well-bred bitches. Um, we've got a bitch called Kalika Phoebe who won a lot of big races in England. She won a lot of prize money. She's owned by a fellow called Roy Felmingham, which is England's owner of the year. He spends a lot of money on greyhounds. We've got a nice bitch of her own called Christmas Holly. Um, she's out of a, another brood bitch of her own that done ever so well for us in England. She got to the St Ledger final and won lots of open races. Her mother did. And um, we've now bred from the daughter, Christmas Holly. She's um, had a litter to call performance and she had a litter of five. Uh, Four of them have won open races, or good class races over here. One of them is uh, Riverside Doodles and Riverside Jake. Uh, Riverside Milo's also won good class races. He's off lame at the moment. She's got she had a little of 11 to Giant Stan Cass. They're 12 months old. Look very nice. Hopefully, you know, they're going to be the part. And she's also got a little of nine to Droopage Vieri, which um, look quite nice again. So hopefully, you never know bit of luck. One of the most memorable things in England when I was racing there was winning the, when the, or looking after the dog that won the St Ledger at um, Wembley, a dog called Foxwatch. And also then getting a the dog that, to the final myself. Um, the bitch one for time we got to the final of St Ledger. It was a great thrill. We got to several v sort of real good finals but they're, they're the things that stick in my mind at the moment anyway. Hopefully um, I'll have some fond memories of Ireland in the next couple of years. You never know your luck. The Kingdom Stadium in Trilly hosted the semi-finals of the Dowling family Caligal sweep last Saturday night. Mal Keefney was there. So here is on the move for the first semi-final in one. It's Liskahan top two, Danielson three, gold medallion. Baltoven Ben in four, in five, the Erie Fancy in six, double measure. Here now swings the final turn up towards the traps, a short distance, a fairly level break, but not smartly, it's Danielson there too, is Vieri Fancy, Danielson in the blue jacket from Vieri Fancy, that's the one to battle on behind, Gold Medallion now moves into third, but out front it's still Danielson who broke reasonably well now from Vieri Fancy, there as well is Gold Medallion, the top dog beginning to slow, the three of them in contention as they swing the final to Ben, Danielson, Gold Medallion and Vieri Fancy into the home straight, it's going to be pretty close, Danielson is being pursued and Gold Medallion is there to win it. It's a win so for Gold Medallion in a time of 32-02, followed home by Danielson with Vieri Fancy taking third. Philip, very happy to be in the final. A good performance tonight by Gold Medallion. Yeah, a good performance tonight, yeah. Uh, he finished strong. Strong. Um, it took him a long time to come, you know, like to, to come to the farm he's in tonight, but he might be coming the right time. Dogs are loaded for the second semi-final in one. It's Bower Droopy, two, Sky Deal, Rushmore Peter, three, Lovely Sally, four, in five, Homestead Bob, and sixth, Fast Roisin's Boy.
the one that normally bombs away from traps is in three. That's Rushmore, Peter, and he is not out well tonight. Sky Deal as well. They're in contention. So too lovely Sally and the stripes of Fast Roisin's boy. Out front, it's Fast Roisin's boy now that shows in front. Down the back straight from Sky Deal. Rushmore Peter now improves and moves into third and challenges for second. Fast Roisin's boy, those clear by three in between the two closing bends. What about the staying power into the home straight? Fast Roisin's boy is not going to be caught here. Sky Deal is going to get up for second, close for third. Perhaps Bauer Droopy is there. The result of the second semi final it's a win here for Fast Roisin's boy. Bauer Droopy up for second and in third, Sky Deal. The time 31.85. Neely, firstly, very happy to be next uh, weekend's final, I'm sure. That's right, very important to be in the final. Um, he ran well tonight, he broke well, uh, trapped, six of his trap, and hopefully six again out of the final will be okay. Declan Dowling of the Dowling family of Kilikal was on hand to perform the trap draw for next weekend's final. In one, gold medallion, two, Bauer Droopy, in three, Sky Deal, four, Vieri Fancy, five, Danielson, and six, Fast Roisin's Boy. A huge roar from the terraces here at Shawfield. The hair is on the way. Hour after racing towards the first bend of Farlow Verdict. She pops out in front. She's leading into the first bend. Then from three on it takes legal moment. Oh, terrible trouble. World class, he was very, very sore coming off the race. Um, went up in the first bend, got into an awful lot of crowd and moved off wide. Carl's idle then hit him, got clipped, it was very sore, both dogs came off sore. World class, luckily, no injuries whatsoever, just soreness, just race soreness. He's just going to get 10 or 12 days race now, I'll give him a gallop and maybe a race in Shelburne and then go to uh, the derby with him, give him a trial around Wimbledon and, and go to the derby. But we're going to reseed him, we're going to seed him on the outside. He doesn't seem to be coming away at the inside. You know, we thought late last year that he was an outside seed and... He seemed to be coming away better out of it, so we're going definitely going on an outside seed in Wimbledon. But that's the plan with him. Carl Zeidler, we're looking at the Ledbrook 600 for him. Uh, just feel he's a little bit young for that trip yet. So he'll, he came off so off the race. He'll go for a puppy race before he goes to Wimbledon. He'll probably go for a 550 puppy race someplace. A one or two off, maybe one race or two races, and then he'll go to Wimbledon, take his chances there. He's fast enough to win a derby just to get him to... The more experience, he's only had seven races, so I think we rate him very highly. I think he's a very good pup. Legal moment, she's come off fine after the race. Didn't get the clearest runs in the derby final. She'll definitely go for the derby, the English derby. She got, she's consistent. She's only been out the first three twice in her life, out of 36 races. She's definitely one of my fences for the derby. If she keeps running the way she's running out of her skin at the moment. If she keeps running that way, I think she'll take beating. It was a tough derby, it was a real good derby, so I was delighted to get him through. It's great to be there. Two, four, six, the second, fourth and sixth. We're going for first, third and, and fifth next year if we can get three to So it's like it's great to get him there. Hopefully we'll we'll definitely go back next year for a crack with a crack with at the derby with something, I don't know what yet, but we'll see what we have around at the time. We'll definitely go back to Scotland though. The National Greyhound Racing Awards take place at the Radisson SAS in Galway this Sunday the 18th of April. Tickets are available at your local track or contact Patricia at the Irish Greyhound Board in Limerick. Next week, we'll be bringing you the finals of the Dowling Family Calical Sweep, the Johnny Ruth Memorial Open 700 from Limerick, the semi-finals of the McCarthy Insurance Cork Oaks, and of course, the results of the 2003 award winners.